Thanks for taking the time. I appreciate it. How are you today? Oh, I'm great. Thank you very much. Where are you located? It's just such an honor to be here. Oh, no problem. Where are you at? I'm, lo I'm, I'm located in Massachusetts. Oh, nice. Is it starting to get nice weather up there? A little cool? Um, yeah, it's starting to transition into much more fall weather, you would say. That's beautiful. Yeah, I'm in Richmond, Virginia, and it's starting to change. We don't have the leaves changing yet, but it's uh, it's getting nice and cool, and you're able to get outside and not sweat your balls off. So, Yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about you. How long have you been playing the drums? Okay, I've been playing the drums since I was about five years old. I've been taking drum lessons since I was about five years old also. Um, you know, I was before I took drum lessons around four or so years old i was just paying away on everything i could find yeah in the house so i mean i i had to be a drummer it was meant to be so, <laughs> right you know, when, when did you first get into your first song. sorry when did you first get into your uh like a, a real sort of band or sort of uh you know playing with others okay that happened with school of rock which is a band program that lets you play with other kids around your age. Mm -hmm. But they noticed that I was more advanced than the kids my age, so they put me up with the um, like the teenagers around like 16, 17 years old. Was that intimidating? Um, I wasn't. I was. I don't think I at the time I was very scared or anything like that. Okay. How did you go about getting? Uh hooked up with all these great big names that you have on your, on your record, like, you know, like Derek Sharon ahead and Bumblefoot, who I, I'm a good friend of but Ron is a great guy. How did yeah, you get in touch with guy. all those? Oh, yeah. Well, I got in touch with Derek first, Derek Serini and the keyboardist. Mm -hmm. So, um, he, um, sent out a post on his Instagram page, um, explaining that he would play on your song if he enjoyed it. So, um, we sent him his so my song, thinking nothing would really come from it. But what do you know? Um, you, you know, Derek is on some of my songs on my album, and right, well, all the songs on my album, and you know, he referred me to Bumble Bumblefoot and Tony right. Franklin. That's so that's I, kind of a who's who. Amazing. What what did you feel like when they got a hold of you? When Derek reached back out, were you pretty surprised? Oh, I was, I was blown away. I, I, you know, I was very, very excited and happy that they wanted to play on my album. That's pretty cool. Do you do your own writing? Yeah, I do all the compositions. I write all of the songs on the album entirely. So you're not just a drummer then, you're an actual uh, full-blown musician. Yeah, I, I do songwriting I do, and I do drumming. And I play some other instruments too. I play guitar, bass, and keys, but drums mainly. Right. So you you put these whole all these songs together, and then go ahead and find people to play with you. Yeah, and the people to play with me uh, on pretty much all the songs in my album besides one are Derek, Tony, and Bumble. Right. So did you guys do that via the internet? And sending files back and forth, or did you actually get into a room and play with them? Yeah, we, we do it sending files on the internet back and forth. So it's pretty interesting how the uh, the world has transitioned. I know you're probably not used to the old school way, but it's very different than how we're you know doing things in the past. Oh, I'm sure. Are you planning on doing anything anything live with this if COVID ever lets up? Um Live performances and tour and touring. I did nothing set in stone yet right now, but I'm plan but I'm planning a live stream on the internet. Probably in a couple months. Again, not set in stone, but right. it's an idea of mine. Are you gonna try and get these guys to play with you? Um, I'm gonna have some other adult musicians playing on the songs. Nice. That's beautiful. When you're writing um, how do you go about your, your writing process? Do you have like a theme or a, a subject in mind or you just sit down and, and go with it and see what happens? 
Um, on, honestly, both both apply. Sometimes I have a theme in mind, and I try to come up with a melody that matches that. Sometimes I really have nothing in mind, and I try to come up with a melody out of really nothing. You know, it just depends, but I usually write all of my melodies initially on the piano, and then I, you know, arrange other instruments together and make a song, you know, with struck, with, you know, song, right, right. form, all of that. But how long does it usually take you to put together a song start to finish? Yeah, that, that, again, varies. A Kiss Goodbye, one of the songs on, on my album, took about three days, where um, The Voyage, which is the final song on my album, took about three, four months. To do. Oh, it did take that long. Completely. I know, I've heard the, uh, the Pharaoh, I've heard the Pharaoh's Temple, and it's a very great song, but what about that one? Was that a difficult one to write? Um... Actually, yeah, it, w- it was. I think that one was over a few months also. When you're writing your songs, do you think about like how they would sound live? Or are you writing a song just for the song's sake? Um, sometimes after I hear the song completed, just as like an afterthought, I might think of how it would sound from like an orchestra standpoint, how that would sound. But, you know, that's just an afterthought. Right. What's it like being 14 and having played with all these musicians and accomplished all this stuff? I imagine your, your friends are pretty jealous, right? Oh, it feels great to be able to do that. And, and all of the musicians at School of Rock have been very, very complimentary about it. That's cool. So what, uh, what instruments do you play in school? Do you play the drums in school? Um, I, at School of Rock, I play um, the drum and ba- and bass and keys pretty much. Oh, you do it all. Yeah. Do they perform at all at School of Rock? Yeah, they they have these performance groups and they rehearse for about four or so months. The summer so they do it for eight weeks. But yeah, they have venues, they tour locally. Oh really? So that's yeah. kinda cool that are you able to do that during COVID or not so much? Um, right now it is, it is opened up, but right when the pandemic started, it was nothing really happened. Who are your biggest influences, uh, musical wise? Um, Dream Theater, Pink Floyd, Ross, Tool, they all inspire my songwriting. Yeah, I mean, that's all that progressive kind of stuff. So I see that in, in your writing. So you're like a progressive sort of music fan. Oh, yeah. Progressive rock, metal, I love right. all that stuff. What kind of, uh, you said metal, that's my wheelhouse. What kind of metal do you listen to? you have any favorite bands? Um, metal, honestly, the very first band I started with metal was like, when I was eight, eight or so years old, I mm-hmm. was listening to Metallica. Nice, nice. I still listen to Metallica to this day. Yeah, they're like the, uh, you know, the upper echelon there. They've, they've done it all and... I imagine oh, yeah. everybody looks up to them for sure. Oh, yeah. Have you had other uh, famous musicians reach out to you? Um, sometimes when I post my Instagram videos, believe it or not, sometimes the famous musicians themselves that either wrote the song or played on the song, sometimes they'll actually share the video once in a great while. That's got to make you feel pretty cool, right? Oh, yeah. That's that's pretty amazing. What about hard rock? Uh, what are your favorite bands in the hard rock genre? Um, I'm not I'm not really you know like too keen on the hard on the well I I'm not really as I say familiar with the hard rock genre. More of a metal fan? Or what? What like what you mean? Are but you I, more I like I like metal? I like progressive and progressive rock. And okay. Progressive metal. Fair generally. enough. Fair enough. Are you um? What do you have planned after this album gets released? Are you heading back uh, to write some more stuff? Do you have a whole lot of stuff planned? Um, I think I'm gonna be probably writing after after the album comes out. That just anything that really inspires me, I'm gonna try to create or compose. Are you one of those musicians that's always writing and always have ideas? Yeah, I always have ideas. 
how do you uh, how do you keep up with them? Are you like using recorders and jot things down everywhere, or are you, do you have the ability to go play? Do you have a studio? Yeah, I I yeah I rec- I originally record everything on GarageBand. Oh, okay. A DAW, and right. then I send it out to the professional musicians, and then they play on the song. Right. Everything you hear is real instruments on the song. Excellent. And then where is it being recorded at? Are you guys, uh, where is it being mixed at? Do you have somebody that's doing the mixing for you? Um, Bumblefoot actually does the mixing. Believe oh, nice. That's pretty wild. He does a very good job. Oh, yeah. I mean, like I said, I've only heard the uh, the Pharaoh's Temple, but yeah, he does a very good job. So what's next for you, Thomas? Um, I'm What I'm trying to accomplish right, right now is, you know, how the album's, you know, faring and, you know, it's doing very, very well. It has about 10,000 streams on Spotify, all the songs put together. Everything's going really well, but as for the future, um, I'm thinking about, once again, becoming a professional songwriter. I'd love to be a session drummer, drumming for other musicians. Right. Of course, drumming for my own future singles, records. You know, that's, that's just... Um, uh, an outline for what I pretty much want to do. Do you have uh, goals or plans to f- put together a band outside of these musicians, like your own band in, you know, in Massachusetts and take on the world? Um, pretty much the, the band that I have is with school of rock, but they, mm-hmm. they've been overwhelmingly supportive. You know, they right. cover songs with the kids. That's kind of how they do it. Gotcha. All right. I don't know if I have anything else, Thomas. Do you have anything that uh, you want to cover that I missed? All right. The only thing that I would like to mention is that my album, The Pharaoh's Temple, is out on Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music right now. You can go listen to it. Um, it's under Thomas Thunder, album's Pharaoh's Temple. Um, hopefully there'll be a music video coming out in the next couple of weeks. For the Pharaoh's Temple, the song. Right. And uh, really, that's all I would like to mention. Just, you know, that my album's out there to listen and available. Well, I know you mentioned you're active on social media. Where can fans find you? Is it Thomas Thunder? They can find me on Instagram and on my website, thomasthundermusic.com. Perfect. And if they reach out to you, you're pretty active social media-wise? Yeah. Yeah, you can you know you can DM me on Instagram. Um, yeah, pretty active. And there's a contact page on my website, thomasthundermusic.com. You can reach me there also. Awesome, Thomas. So your accomplishments are quite amazing. I wish you well, the thank best. Thank you very much. It means the world to me. I wish you the best of success, and hopefully we'll see you at uh, Madison Square Garden here one day. <laughs> oh, that would be a dream. Or, or in your case, Boston Gardens, right? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, thank you for taking the time, Thomas. You have a good day. Stay safe and be well. Oh, thank you for having me. Take care, my friend. All right, you too. All right, bye. All right, goodbye. Bye. Ever wonder what a punch from Elton John feels like? Or how you cope with having turned down the chance to be in Nirvana? Or what signal Keith Richards gives when he wants you to get the hell out of his hotel room? Fans of Too Much Effing Perspective don't have to wonder, because they've heard these exact stories and a jillion others on our podcast. I'm Alex Hoffman, former tour manager for Radiohead. And I'm musician and comedy writer Alan Keller. On the TMEP show, we get guests like Nancy Wilson from Heart, Jeremiah Freights from the Lumineers, and Modern Family's Julie Bowen to tell us things they may have only shared with their therapist, clergy, or a TMZ stringer. So join us on Too Much Effing Perspective. That's E-F-F-I-N-G Perspective. The only podcast you crank up to 11. Oh.